Sensei's, <laughs> aka Kid Cadet, joined by my co-host. Oh, that's me, oh, Danica, yeah. aka Naja today. From? What we do in the shadows. Yes. So uh, she's looking for virgins, so be careful. All right. Anyway, this is our special Halloween episode, and we couldn't be more excited because he loves things all Halloween as much as Naja and I do. So I guess I think we should dub him the king of coffee, the most badass bassist. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Maddie, everybody. Yay! Oh, hey. Hi. hi. The king has arrived. He has arrived. The king of coffee. How Great. Are, are you <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm trying to keep up. Uh, no, I'm drinking a pumpkin spice, just pumpkin spice coffee, just pumpkin spice coffee. That's not fair. It's pumpkin spice coffee. I, I yeah. shouldn't be talking down about it, but okay. it's not the Medi 2.0, but it's it is not. pumpkin spice coffee. Okay. It's not, but it's pumpkin spice. That um is one of our questions coming up. We will get into the great pumpkin spice debate, but we are so great. excited, Maddie. It's been <laughs> a long time. You are the busiest bee this year. So why don't you kind of give us a rundown since the last time you've been here, you've been on the Machine Gun Kelly tour with Avril Lavigne. You've been in South America. You've been in our great neighbors to the North, Canada. You've done countless festivals and now you're getting ready to make your way over to Asia. So why don't you just break it? Yeah, <laughs> you're like, how many? Yeah, right. <laughs> Forty-seven thousand. For yeah. So um, yeah, it's great to be back. Let's say that first. I can't believe I'm looking at the um, at the calendar. I'm like, it's been that long. That's yeah. Weird. <laughs> it it kind of it goes by in a flash, but then at the same time, I'm like, wow, this it has been a long time. I guess you know when I think of everything <laughs> like you're mentioning, you know. Um, yeah. So it started like the day after New Year's. We got to rehearsals and. Um, January 2nd, we started just getting right to it. Avril released a new record in February. So we started the year with an album release show, learned all the new songs, um, went to Canada to start. We did that for about two months. Uh, we were supposed to go to Europe, but at the start of the year, it was still COVID and all that stuff. It was, we we're still getting spikes around the world. So that got pushed to 2023 again. <laughs> you know, every year it's getting pushed, it seems. Um, but yeah, we did Canada for about two months. Then we did a uh, uh, MGK's main, mainstream sellout tour around the U.S. Uh, amazing venues on on both of those tours. Uh, sold out Madison Square Garden, which was crazy. Sold out like hockey arenas all over Canada. Um, and then uh, went down to South America after that. Played Rock and Rio. Uh, Hundred and ten thousand people at the stage, so that was nuts. Was went uh, a few more shows around South America. Came back, like you were saying, more. Um, more countless festivals around the US, which we just wrapped last weekend with um, the When We Were Young Festival in Vegas. Yeah. And now in about a week, a little over a week, we're gonna be in Asia to finish off the year. So uh, other than that, yeah, just, you know, pretty boring year, it sounds like, you know, nothing nothing much to report. It doesn't sound like I'm up to much, you know? Oh, yawn, Maddie. <laughs> <laughs> what <Next>. a... <laughs> I know. So what... Get some real talent on this show, jeez, you know? <laughs> Oh man. Unbelievable. So, obviously you mentioned Avril had a new album that came out earlier this year. What is your favorite song to play live from this new album? Uh, I've got two of them. I, I really like Boys Lie, which mm -hmm. is a really upbeat. Well, actually the whole record, Love Sucks, is like a very upbeat, she's back to like a pop punk, energetic type vibe on this record. Um, Boys Lie is a collaboration with Machine Gun Kelly. So that was always fun. Never you know, heard of him. Perform it. Yeah. yeah, he's kind of like an up and coming guy. Um, uh -huh. We when we performed it at the um, album release show, uh, Avril's uh, record executive, like owner, the label she's on, uh, it's like a drummer named Travis Barker. He's kind of like an up and coming drummer. Tra Travis. So yeah, so we Trayvon played Barker? with like okay. the three of them. It was like me. I got to play with Travis Barker, this up and coming guy, Machine Gun right. Kelly. Like that was kind of fun. I wish them both the best. Hopefully mm -hmm. their careers mm -hmm. pan out. Off, but that yeah. one's always fun. It's really upbeat. It's like right before Skater Boys at the end, like everyone gets really into it. Um, that's probably my favorite one to, to perform live for sure. Very bouncy. I get to jump in, in time and everything, you know? We love bouncy. It's like what I do best. That's like all yes. I do. I bounce. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, I, I wanted to ask too, because it seems like whenever you're getting ready to embark on a new tour, your hair kind of reflects maybe your mood, the tour. So what can you tell us about your current hair and are you sticking with it? I, I like it. It's like right now it's giving me teal. It's giving me blue. Tell us yep. about what you're rocking. Yeah, that's good. Those are those are good good descriptions. It's teal, it's blue, green, 
it's aqua. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Everything. Um, you're very, you're right. Like I, this year alone, I've already had so many hairstyles. I started with like a blonde, kind of like a long look to start the year. And it from there, it went to like a pink look. And then I've had the shaved sides and then I had the blue. And so I already this year alone, even in the middle of tour, I've switched it up. Um, it definitely does reflect kind of just my mood, what I'm feeling at the moment. People always ask like, what's your next color going to be? Or how do you decide the hairstyles? And literally it's, it's like a day-to-day -day thing. I wake up and I'm like, oh, I don't want to do this anymore. Oh, I want to grow the back out. Oh, I want blue instead. So literally, um, I don't know. So when we did the last tour, we did in uh, 2019, which, and then the whole world kind of shut down from the pandemic. I had pink hair to start. And then I was going to do blue when we went to Asia. And when it all came full circle and we went back on tour, that was kind of, I was having those vibes again of like feeling happy to go on tour. It was, life was feeling like it was back to normal again. So that's why I went to pink just because it felt right. And then when we were in the middle, I was having those vibes again. of like, oh yeah, I remember I was going to do blue when we were going overseas. So it literally just, it all kind of came full circle. <laughs> and that's how I decided to do the blue hair and the different styles. Yeah, yeah, I don't know who changes their hair more, you or Danica. Because Danica, like every other month is like, I, yeah, right? I'm blonde, but now I want to, I'm or, thinking. But like brown on the top and blue on the bottom. Oh, yeah. Also blonde, but then I don't want to do lavender. But also maybe I'll just do red again. Listen. Oh, that's so funny. So you do the multicolors. I've never, mm -hmm. for me, it's like one color. Because then when I switch, which I do all the time, at least I know it'll all kind of work out well. <laughs> you know? I, I so feel like for a while. People always I, like, want me to do multi. I was gonna say you and I were like on the same like hair like we, we were twinning for a while, but now yep. yeah, yeah, I got annoyed, so I just decided to stop that. I was like, you know, you I'm go. gonna do my own thing. You know, yeah. I, I, that was me. I pulled away from that for sure. Yeah, <laughs> I was. I want you know, it was fine. It was cute for like a few months, and then I'm like, I'm out of here. You know, lonely. <laughs> <here. Just> lonely. <laughs> <Just kidding. laughs> no. I yeah. Think right. I think everyone believes what you were saying too. They're like, what? I know, <laughs> right? Don't hate each other. Every, everything's right. Everything's good. Um, before we go on to Danica's next question, uh, people want to know, are you dyeing your hair yourself or do you get it professionally done? Tell us, give us the tea. Uh, oh, it's funny. So up until the start of the tour, it was always like, go to the salon, get a cut, all this stuff. And then we've been on the road for, like I said, I mean, you heard what was happening this year. And when you're gone for months at a time and all this stuff, and then when you have little breaks, it's so hard to get into salon and do all this. So it, this last year, I've learned how to do my makeup better. I got close to Avril's new makeup artist on this tour. So she was definitely giving me more makeup tips. And then um, just based on having to keep the color up, the shape of the hair and all that stuff, I got close with her uh, hairstylist as well on the road. And I learned how to kind of do it myself. And it was so funny because I was so scared taking the clippers and taking color to my own hair and cutting it. I'm like, I've gone to a salon my whole life. But then I realized, oh, she's fun. You get more... You can like have more fun with it too because then i'm like oh i want more blue so i can put a little bit extra blue or this or that um when i'm not on the road i definitely prefer going to someone who knows how to do it better than me <laughs> but just based on how this year has been it's been do it myself and kind of make it look presentable there you, <laughs> go. you know Working out, otherwise right? it, otherwise it's nuts <laughs> all right so the that's next right question oh yeah <laughs> yeah that's correct <laughs> <laughs> so the next question is of course about all of the the multitudes of comments that you made about uh, all of your food adventures. Um, and oh, yeah. You did a lot of commenting about the food in Peru. But mm -hmm. <laughs> what has been your favorite new food discovery while on tour Ooh. so far? Oh, that's crazy. I, <laughs> South America, you know, um, you know, um, North American food, like, yeah, we were in Canada. And there's certain things that Canada has that is different than the US. But for the most part, you know, it's pretty similar. Yeah, they got their ketchup chips and stuff like that, you know, so they, but like the mint Kit this Kats year, <laughs> yeah, they've got all kinds of like cool little nuanced things and, and it tastes a little different, but uh, this is my first time getting down to South America and my mind was just blown like immediately. So uh, I'm trying to think what the best thing, ceviche is so good. So they have like, yeah. Peru is very big with like seafood. Oh yeah, you, you, you have uh, relatives uh -huh. from Peru, right? Yeah. So ceviche was really good. So I went down, like a few weeks before we went down to Peru, I was just kind of watching YouTube videos and learning a little bit about the culture. Um, you know, to have this opportunity to go travel the world, I don't want to just take it for granted and play some shows and come back. I want to experience like what the culture is really like. So I was finding out about ceviche and all of these other things. So my first night there, I like just DoorDash or Rappi, you know, it's like the food delivery <laughs> service down there. 
I repeat a bunch of like ceviche and all this stuff to my uh, hotel room. And it's funny because it comes with a whole spread of like pickled fish and all of <laughs> like everything that you have to add in a certain order and mix it. I didn't know what it was. So I live streamed it just to ask people in Peru, like, hey, how do I eat this? And it's funny, they like, they were so excited. They're like, oh man, he's eating ceviche, he's having this. So it kind of blew up. And I was like all over the news in Peru. It was so funny. They're like, Avril's basis is like eating this. So I came back to America and the company actually hit me up, like the equivalent of like DoorDash hitting me up. And it was like the CEO. And they're like, hey, we've never delivered into America before, but we know you love like, uh, what was it? Uh, Arroz con mariscos, which is like the seafood rice they have down there. Okay. They're like, hey, we want to deliver it to you from Peru. It'll be the first time ever. Can we like hook this up? And they made this whole thing and they sent me like food from Peru and everything. Like that's how much I loved oh, it. Nice. So so if I don't say that Peru was my favorite thing that I discovered, it would be obviously a lie because <laughs> literally the country like got together to like deliver me food and stuff in, into America. Nice. So crazy. That's okay. Yeah. I guess the, the follow-up question to Danica's question would be, which country has the strongest coffee? Mm. Mm. That's a good one. Um, it's funny. So I got this coffee down in, again, it's Peru. Definitely South America, obviously, has like a <laughs> different vibe with it. Ding. Um, ding, ding, ding. So it wasn't necessarily strong, but it's just, it's weird. You drink coffee your whole life, and you kind of know what you get at the grocery stores or local places around town in America and all that. Uh, the first time you try it down in South America where it's like locally grown and roasted, like literally like there in that country, there's just something about it that's so different. So I would say uh, both Brazil and Peru, I just really love the coffee, but it wasn't strong. It was just, it's kind of like fruitier, I guess. It has like a little extra, kind of like a more uh, mature taste to it or something like oh, there's more. Yeah, it's, it's really like interesting. Coffee. Yeah. yeah, it's so good. So yeah, South America. As you can imagine, really yeah. good for that. <laughs> sure. you know? So you had also mentioned earlier, out of your adorable little skeleton cup there uh, or mug, <laughs> today, um, you're drinking pumpkin spice. So you know, yeah. I know the last time we had you on here, which was the Steve Gonzalez, we were having like the whole debate about candy corn. Now I think we should talk about pumpkin spice. So obviously, you are team pumpkin spice. Oh, 100 percent, 100 percent. So. Um, yeah, I don't even understand. Like, I, it tastes good, and I think everyone knows that. But I think people just don't want to, like, you know, they, they have, they're they very prideful, and they're like, oh, I don't want to say I like pumpkin spice coffee. I think it's a universal fact that everybody likes pumpkin spice coffee. It's just a matter of who's going to admit it. I've never had it, so... Oh, but you you would like it. Like, yeah, it's just I a would. universal fact. And Danica, you're... Oh, it. big time. hundred fucking percent. Oh, okay. my God. Yeah, see? Yeah. Now, are, That's not are even they... a question. Are the two of you guys also the people that when you carve a pumpkin, you like bake the pumpkin seeds? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. I do. I do oh, yeah. half of them um, with like roasted with olive oil and salt, like like sea salt, and then the other half I do with cinnamon sugar. That sounds great. I would. Whoa! I've never had it. cinnamon sugar. <laughs> it's a real. That good. sounds pretty good. I would try that. I would try that. So. <laughs> Before we pivot into Danica's first Halloween question, a question mm. Rose wants to know if there's a song that's endlessly stuck in your head after a show. <laughs> that's a good one. Um, that's a really good one. You know, I've been listening to a lot. Um, you know, what's what song was it? It's um, oh, it's I can't believe it. It's it was like an '80s pop song. I can't remember what it was. It was I'm gonna have to look it up. But I'm drawing a blanket. No. <laughs> that's a good one too that's a really great one it was oh okay, man yeah. it was like I mean, donna was, summer or something like that head. like we we're always like rocking some stuff and it was um yeah it's funny because the shows definitely it's always like just a giant blur you finish up the show and then it's like oh go to the next city or go back to the hotel really quick so usually what will happen is the way that these songs get stuck in my head and the way that it's always like an 80s pop song is i'll have it, my phone playing music i'll be doing my makeup before the show and then usually it's like an 80s like pop mix or something like that. I put my phone down, I play a show, and then I come back. And the first thing that's on is like the song that ended when I was doing my makeup before. And I'm like, oh, yeah, this is great. And then I just leave it on repeat like the whole time. You know? <laughs> I love it. Yeah. yeah. So okay. usually, I would say usually it's like some type of 80s pop thing that I'm listening to on the road. Sounds very on brand for you, Maddie. <laughs> yeah. No, no, it doesn't, you know. What? Maddie, 80s pop? <laughs> 
Is this the same guy? I should have said, like, well, I listen to, like, metal. I, I'm listening to, like, some hardcore metal on the road. That's I what see, I listen to. you know. The That's a thrash. Metal. Yeah, yeah. It thrash metal, all that stuff, you know. So work out my bass stuff, you know. <laughs> 80s pop. It's all about it. And George yeah, Michael, yeah. obviously. So. <laughs> Are we ready for Halloween <clears throat> flavored things? Let's do it. All right. So, Ooh. Maddie, as an adult, what is the best way to celebrate Halloween? Oh, you know, it's funny. I, I'm i so into, like, the traditional kind of, like, spooky fun vibes of Halloween. So I'm more of, like, the give out the candy, dress up, mm -hmm. go all scary, check out the trick-or-treaters. never done that. Decorate. Uh, I do that vibe. Yep. That's the way to do it. it I never go to, like, Halloween parties and all that stuff of, like... Yeah, let's go to the bars and all this stuff and dress up and look super attractive. And yeah, Halloween. I do the opposite. I watch scary movies and give out candy and like dress up. Like I like the horror vibe of it, you know? Yeah. I'm always like that, you know, well, strobe lights is, and fog and all that stuff, you know? It's funny because like, um, I don't know, Maddie, because like you've been super, super, super busy. I know Danica got to see it and I got to see it. Terrifier too. Have you gotten to see it yet? You did. I did. I saw okay. it in theaters. Oh, that was so cool. So Oh awesome. yeah, it's only in theaters now. But yeah. Right. So... The yeah. situation is, is like they they have these like killer parties, like I guess literally killer parties. But it's like you always <laughs> see the adults like at these bars and like everyone's dressed up and there's like awesome music. I'm like, does that exist outside of these incredible horror movies? Because I've never been to one. If it does exist, oh, yeah. I would like to go. You know, I remember seeing it like in college and stuff when I before I went to like music school. That like a a typical college that didn't really have like art program and all that stuff. I was there for like. A year and i remember when i was there um everyone did that stereotypical kind of like dress up look super hot do that thing halloween i'm gonna look you know shirtless dudes and you know like everyone looking ripped and i'm like it's so weird i think i showed up i did i showed up that year dressed up like gene simmons and i had like the blood smear and everything and i'm like oh this wasn't the right vibe that's so funny <laughs> you know? Who I, okay it was like my first time going to, it was like my first and only time going to like a stereotypical like halloween like social party like that you know it's kind of funny I, but that's Dan, the only time i've seen it it scared me away it, I, Dan, i've never done the like the like sexy halloween costume thing the closest i got was um shirley manson from garbage <laughs> no he said there you go I, there was one year god i'm gonna say it and like i hope danic and i like don't ah, i don't want to say it there i'll say it this way there was one year, no that was oh. fine before that like for one of your birthday parties when me you and richard like our costume was just knocking door to door we were jehovah's witnesses oh that's right <laughs> <laughs> i totally forgot about that yeah that's but, such a good one yeah but i think here that i went with richard and i was a dominatrix and he was no on a chain th that was our rocky <laughs> horror picture oh. show. that was your rocky yeah. horror picture show birthday party so when and, we were 11. Okay, good. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. Yes. As, <laughs> all true. Good costumes. As one does. So since we're talking about costumes, Maddie, are you dressing up this year? Uh, uh possibly. You know, it's funny. I always have like a go-to like Michael Myers. It's yeah. before, or maybe it's around like the Rob Zombie Halloween era. I got like a full like Michael Myers costume. And it's funny. I, that's always kind of like my go-to with a lot of stuff. So I like scaring people. And um, that was like probably like the last, Halloween costume I bought. So it's funny. So I, I kind of always go back to like the, if I do dress up, it's usually like I bust out the Michael Myers, you know? Because <laughs> it's the cool thing about what I do is I kind of get, like, I've literally done this makeup on stage before, like the dead eyes makeup. And I do that. So every time I play a show, I kind of feel like I get to dress up and play like Halloween a little bit. So right. it's really cool. So when yeah. it's actual Halloween, I'm like, okay, I guess it's, you know, I can do the makeup and stuff all year round just based on what I do, but it's not okay for me to dress up like michael myers every day you like i don't think that's acceptable so so i'll take it when it comes you know i'm thinking for your uh japan tour you you bring them michael Meyer. you just be the shape i, shape playing I think you're right am i i wonder how they yeah they probably love it it'd be great i think it'd go yeah. Over huge yeah yeah it's, it's good stuff i'm excited for japan because they're yeah i was thinking like oh they get so scared because michael myers it probably freaks them out but then i'm thinking like japanese horror is like so wild they're i forget that. Above, like, they like, seem like yeah. such a cute culture and then i'm like oh wait their horror and all that stuff is crazy so a lot of yeah stuff comes was, from yeah uh what's um the the one with the the island that's basically um battle royale oh uh battle royale. yeah 
Is that Jap- yep. is that Japanese or is that yes. Korean? Okay, Japanese. I remember mm-hmm. Maddie. I made you watch that. That's right, and I loved it. It's and I was so yeah. happy. Uh, and then I went on a whole Japanese horror kick right after that. You are the audition. Ready. The audition. Oh, the audition. I watched that right after mm-hmm. that. That was oh, wild. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they've got some crazy, crazy. I'm yeah, I'm real excited to to go visit because yeah. as we were talking about like where in Michael Myers in Japan, I'm like, oh, that would freak him out. I'm like, wait. <laughs> That doesn't make sense because every time I've watched a J horror movie, I've been freaked out like way more than watching like a Halloween movie, you know. So they do it right. They do it mm-hmm. right. Uh, That's did right. Did you have a, a favorite costume as a kid? Uh, yeah, I've had a bunch. Like every year, I would get a new one. I remember I was Darth Vader one year. That was funny. Uh, <laughs> like the full thing, the cape, and all that. I was Dracula. I remember when I it's very similar makeup to now. I remember I was Dracula when I was in like kindergarten or first grade and I did like the whole white makeup with the blood coming out you know on the cape um I always just kind of go more into like the um it's funny I was like Mighty Max remember Mighty Max from like the 90s oh, it was like the yeah. but, like, and it's funny that was still in the era I don't know they probably don't do this anymore maybe but like you know like the straight up like the costumes were just kind of like something you put over your clothes it was just like really thin and you had like the mask with like the little rubber band on it oh, God, like yeah. i remember having costumes like that where it was just like dress normal and then just put like these overalls on that are like super <laughs> thin and tie it, it in the back into, like you the know? plastic zip up thing that was like if effectively like overalls but like oh yeah last it was so bad <laughs> yeah it was so i remember a lot of that i think the the costumes and everything is have become like so cool now you know and technology with all that and i think halloween in general um i remember it when i was growing up you know in the 90s and stuff it was still kind of cool but it seems like now it's like really cool you know like it's really big and popular and people get so into it that like the masks and the costumes and everything um and like leds and digital stuff that's out there now it's like really cool the yeah. costumes for me I, uh september 1st is halloween like that's when it begins <laughs> And if yep. I see, like, I, I feel like this year, for some reason, they're like, okay, it's Halloween, but it's also Christmas. And so, like, mm-hmm. I'm seeing so many Christmas commercials, and I'm very, like, look, I mean, it's fine. I love Christmas, too. But, like, let let us have Halloween. You can have Christmas after Thanksgiving, you know? Like, it's, yeah. it, it's, it's a lot. Just mm-hmm. let us have our Halloween. Yeah, everything's like... You can have our, you can have Christmas, but wait until after Thanksgiving. And then Thanksgiving's like, you can have Thanksgiving, but wait until after Halloween. And then Halloween's like, you can have your Halloween, but wait, like everything is just like, <laughs> then you can have your Easter and then you can have your Memorial Day and then you can have your New Year's and then you can have your Valentine's Day. And then, you know, it's yeah. kind of crazy. I just want to so nuts. Good. Right. Yeah. Ooh, well, Halloween here's all a very, a very important go. question. What is the most overrated candy? Oh, geez. That's so funny. Um, Wow, that's a really good question. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to think of like what's really good and then I kind of just don't like it. I don't know. I see I'm not like super into candy. Like, and the candy I love is like super highly rated. So I don't think that it's overrated. Sour Patch Kids, definitely my favorite. So yeah. definitely can't say that's overrated. Um, You know, that's a really good question. I, M&Ms, M&Ms are horrible. What? Oh my God, what? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm not really into M&Ms, I guess. Huh. Um, Who's in the M&M's? Me. Well, then I, <laughs> that's M&Ms? a good question. That, then that was a good answer. Yes. I, no, no. Highly, highly approve, and I think they're overrated. You there broke my heart. Oh, I know. <laughs> but then you, it, was a, it was a baiting question. You were like, <laughs> say something very offensive, and don't <laughs> expect us to like you after you answer this honestly, you know? <laughs> well, that's been our stream, guys. We'll see. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay. I mean, yeah, I would say M&M's, because uh, I'm not no. super into chocolate, and I know that I, that's like... I would say, given the choice, mm-hmm. Reese's Pieces or M and M's, like ten times out of ten, I'm going Reese's Pieces. U N E T apparently. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, yeah I, very much so. I, yeah. I don't eat peanut butter, so I don't like any of that. But okay, more. Well, that's now. our stream. Okay, I'm out of here. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't. Wow, M and M's. Okay, okay. But I don't dislike people that like M and M's. Well, thanks. I, it's the it's the people that like Snickers that annoy me because they feel like they're so high and mighty like we know that snickers are good snickers it's like you don't have to like you don't have to hold it every over everyone's head like, i, I don't feel like i do that i just i just appreciate snickers bars <laughs> <laughs> so i'm not gonna hold it over anybody and be like how dare you not appreciate a snickers bar <laughs> <laughs> snickers fans i'm telling you you know you're not you when you're hungry uh, okay so yeah. 
Now, Maddie, I'm not sure how much you, you know about this place, but have you ever heard of McKamey Manor? I have. Yes, I okay. have. So do you have any thoughts on McKamey Manor or like- I switched any... up coffee cups. Oh, okay. <laughs> Apparently we're doing that. It, yeah. Dawn of the Dead. See? I didn't see that one. Ah, yeah. That's George Romero. Dawn oh, there of the it Dead. is. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah, yeah. Love, are you just going to keep doing this throughout the stream? He has like a lineup of coffee <laughs> cups next to him. I, I, drank, I drank a little bit before the stream and I only have two- here so this is i won't continue doing this yeah yeah this will just be my second one so any thoughts on mckinney manor or like haunted attractions in general yeah i love horror i love halloween i love horror books and i love horror movies i love the ambiance and the atmosphere i love halloween time i love the weather and the crunching leaves all that stuff but when it comes to like the walkthrough attractions i'm horrible really bad yeah like i kind of have to get forced every year i really like it's funny because i know especially like in hollywood and stuff i know people that work uh at universal and they do the set designs and they're the ones you know putting together these intricate sets and you know literally taking months to design it all and that's like a talent that i'll never be able to appreciate of what they're doing because when i'm in there i just like try to run straight through and it's like <laughs> The, the set designs and the work that is done on all of it is so cool, but I can never appreciate it because I'm always just so scared. I'm I'm like a, such a baby. I'm a, I'm terrible with it for real. Daddy. So bad. I went to Bush so Gardens like, this past weekend, yeah. and I was like, I went on three roller coasters. The lines were insane, of course, um, yeah, because they do Hallow Screen this time of year, and I got to go on three roller coasters. One of them was the coolest one I've ever been on. Um, the Verboten, um, very cool. Um, and I did a single house and went, nope, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm kind of just like, so like universal, like the way that they do their horror nights, it's so packed and it's so crazy. And everyone's kind of just like in a, it's almost like an assembly line of like you walk through and you get scared. So it's a little easier, fast pass. but some of the, yeah, that's true. That's true. But some of the other ones, you know, where it's like, how many people in your group? Okay. Two people go ahead. And then you're on your own or whatever. I hate mm -hmm. that. It's like, oh, this is so and then i'm like you know just i'm so bubbly and fun and whatever so i think people just know like oh yeah let's mess with this guy and when it comes to the chainsaws forget it as soon as i hear the chainsaws so done i hear maddie. chainsaws and i'm like i'm going back home sorry maddie but i'll watch horror movies i don't get scared at all with movies i love it i love getting scared i love watching the effects as soon as i have to just walk through the tiniest little like you know corn maze or haunted attraction it's like okay i'll see you I, I'll do it, but it's not my favorite. We should, oh man, you'd have fun if you came with us. We have the best, like I love Halloween Horror Nights. It is my favorite thing. Like it's to me, like that's in Halloween, like is, I'm like, yeah, oh, yeah. it's happening. So, I love getting scared. I, 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 if I don't get scared in a haunted house, then that's not good for me. I want, I, I literally want to scream. Yeah. No, it's, it's pretty rough. So last year, I think it was last summer or something. So my brother was, um, he made like this horror film that was, being screened around a bunch of conventions and stuff. And we were in, I think it was Louisville, Lu Louisville, Louisville, right? Louisville. Isn't that how you have to say it? Louisville. And there's some like <laughs> hotel or something like haunted, ho I can't remember the name of it, but there's some like hotel attraction that's like an extreme haunt. And he's like, yeah, we should go. And I was so against it. I'm like, fine, I'll go. And it was like, you know, I paid the money. It was like kind of expensive too for, cause I didn't even want to go to begin with. And then we get to the front and we're about, we're like the next ones in. And they're like, okay, so just a disclaimer, we do want to let everyone know that this is an extreme haunt. You will get grabbed, you'll get touched, your hair can get pulled. And I'm like, no. whoa, 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 no. I'm not doing it. no way. And no. I, so no, he ended up doing it. I immediately was just like, nope. So we came out and he's like, oh, it wasn't that bad. And I'm like, oh, did they like touch you and grab you? He's like, yeah, but it was fine. I'm like, oh, no way, no, no way. None I get scared that. when they come out and go, boo, there's no yeah. way I'm going to McKinney Manor or anything where they yeah. touch or grab or anything. No way. But I think you'd have fun in Halloween Horror Nights. I, I, think, I like, do. Halloween Horror Nights is always fun because it's licensed, like movie licenses and the groups mm -hmm. are always fun and all that. So I do enjoy that. But more at the extreme haunts or the smaller ones where you're kind of isolated. I'm like, not for you I'll just go home and watch a movie and laugh at people on the screen. <laughs> like, ha ha. <laughs> <laughs> the serial killer got you. But then I go through like five minutes of a thing and I'm, I'm done, you know? Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> well, Maddie, do you have any particular bands or maybe even songs that you like to listen to, to get into the spooky season? 
Um, that's a good question. I, not particularly. I usually what'll happen is because I do love horror and I'm always listening to it like all year round and everything. There's nothing that's like, oh, it's Halloween time. Let's get ready for it. I literally kind of find myself listening to horror music and stuff. And you know what I do a lot is if I'm going for a walk at night or going for a run at night or just, you know, anything kind of around town, just chill. Um, I always have like headphones on. I'm always listening to music. And a lot of times I'll listen to like soundtracks of Halloween or Friday the 13th, Nightmare on Elm Street. It happens a lot just to kind of like, I do that, but I'll do that in the summer. I'll do that in the winter. I'll do that, you know, in spring. I do it all year round. So it's not necessarily like bands or anything that I'm like, oh, let's listen to, you know, this scary song to get me in the mood. But usually just because I like horror in general, you'll find me all year round kind of listening to like Night of the Living Dead soundtrack or like, you know, <laughs> scary music all throughout the year. I was going to say, if, yeah. you're like, if you're running at night and you're listening, listening to like, do, 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 mm -hmm. like, do you feel like you're being chased? Like, is my in a, in a In a cool way. Yeah, I don't yeah. get scared, but I kind of do that in a way that's like, oh, this is creepy. This is fun. This is vibey. And it kind of like, you know, I'll do that. I'll kind of freak myself, not freak myself out, but I'll do that to kind of feel like I'm getting into like a cool little horror mood. Um, if I go into a haunted attraction though, then I'm like, oh no, no, I'm really getting scared. You know? <laughs> but yeah, I remember a few times too, like around Hollywood, I had like some late nights and stuff, like maybe after playing shows or whatever, walking in some weird areas and having the music playing. Cause I don't know why I wouldn't like just stop and be aware of my surroundings, but I would still just like put the music on and I would like really intentionally freak myself out sometimes to be like, oh man, I wonder if like Michael Myers is around the corner. It, it was just like a, it, it was just a, a weirdo, but like I, it could have been Michael Myers, it but it was sunset been. and you never know. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was really just a weird guy. William Shatner. Um, it was, was William Shatner. He was down on his luck. Oh my God, who, who would have thought? Yeah. So, okay. <laughs> so let's say, hypothetically, whether you want to give an actual answer or a fake answer, like a real person, a fake person. Let's say that you're in like an abandoned building, a forest. Who's someone that you like wouldn't want to encounter in like a, a space like that? Um, I, you know, I've said this before and obviously we've mentioned it already. I think Art the Clown is the scariest. Like that's just <laughs> wild. But that's like the expected answer. Let's see if there's... Um, is that expensive? I wonder, well, because we've already talked about Terrifier 2 today, and we've done that. Only for we, a second. Okay. We can yeah. talk. It's, it's still a very valid point, though. Because I've definitely mentioned this, even, like, it seems like every few times I'm on this show, I'm like, yeah, Art the Clown, Art the Clown. Okay, well, let's do Art the Clown, then. I was like, yeah. I mean, yeah, let's do Art the Clown. Do you have a favorite kill from, from Terrifier 2? Ooh, spoilers. Uh, spoiler alert, everyone turn down. Um, they haven't seen it yet. Uh, go see it. Uh, yeah, if you go see it, it's going to be streaming, right, on Halloween? Is that right? Yeah. On, uh, so it's yeah. in theaters now, or you can wait and stream it on Halloween. But if you already saw it, let's see. Um, it's funny. I, I think I enjoyed some of the the smaller. You know which one was good? Was I'm trying to remember it because there were so many in the movie. It was like so good. It was. I only saw it once so far. I have to see it again. But didn't he? What he killed like the guy at the costume shop. And then like the, the head was like decapitated and it like closed its eyes and it was like blinking or whatever. It was cool. Yeah. I like yeah. that. It was a subtle kill. Subtle. Very, I like that one. I, yeah. Art is just really subtle with his kills. Yeah, that's what I like about the movie. It's very yeah. subtle. You'd never it, know it's it more him. about what you don't see that scares yeah. you. It's like, wow, if I would have saw a little bit more of that, it probably would have ruined it for me. Mm -hmm. But luckily they didn't show any of that on screen. That's what I really like about the ter terrifier films. Yeah. It's, like that it's more like in your it's in your mind. You kind of create the the scare in your mind because they intentionally don't show you. It's really I like how they do that. Yeah, uh, Damien is a genius. They're all geniuses. Yeah, and, uh, there's gonna be a third and possibly a fourth. So that's right. But yeah, just if anyone hasn't seen it and they're interested, it it's kind of the exact opposite. It is they never pull <laughs> yeah. the camera away. They show everything. Like it's yeah. it's very crazy. It's incredible could, practical special effects. Right, like, and it's all practical. Say, it's incredible. You know. Yeah. And they're getting so much publicity because people are fainting and they're passing out and stuff. And it's, you know, because I know Damien, I know he's on the show and stuff. And I've, you know, David, I've hung out with them. They're so nice. And I'm just so into like making, you know, music and film and all that stuff, like the behind the scenes. So I was just blown away of like the effects when I'm in the theater and mm -hmm. I see that. I'm like, whoa, how do they do this? This is, exactly. this looks so good. That's nuts. So I, luckily I've always kind of been able to pull away and mm -hmm. know that it's not real. And I kind of just get fascinated with the talent of the filmmaking itself. So that's what I was into when I saw it in theaters. But I can understand if 
you don't really understand the background or you've never seen anything like that, how sure. it can be like the craziest thing you've ever seen, <laughs> you know, oh, yeah. which is good because it's getting so much publicity, you know. Well, well deserved. They're all like such great people, too. I mean, just yeah, I adore them really. all. Oh, man. And it, yeah, if you guys haven't seen it yet, this is the perfect time of year to go see it. Go check out Terrifier 2. It will not disappoint. So, I mean, Stephen King agrees. So that's right. That's Can you so imagine cool. like getting the ultimate nod from Stephen King? Right? Yeah, yeah, I couldn't believe it. You know, I, I was so excited. I remember when I first saw Terrifier and then first time I was on the show, I kind of just randomly mentioned it to you like, oh, yeah, I like this movie Terrifier, you know, and I never would have thought <laughs> that when I first saw it, like what, three, four years ago, that it would just turn into like the biggest mainstream mm -hmm. movie of this year for Halloween and everything. And hopefully like a huge franchise and everything. So it's so cool. Here's I couldn't open. believe it. Here's open. All right. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah. Love it. I'm so happy. But to see a movie like that in theaters is wild. I never thought I would see something yeah. like that. I've seen so many movies like that streaming or I've, you know, on Blu-ray and all that stuff. Um, but I never, that was my first time seeing something like that in a theater with people and just hearing the reactions. It was so cool. You know? For sure. For sure. Right. Yeah, that, I think that's the thing that everybody tends to mention most is like the hearing everybody else in the audience reacting at the same time. It's just like oh, yeah. a very oh, different yeah. experience. It's, it's so cool. You're I'm right. Scared them. Uh, Danica, why don't you ask one more? I'll ask one more and then we'll go to the game. All right. I'm going to go with this one. Um, go ahead. What urban legend scares you most? Mm. Oh. Hmm. Hmm. That's a good question. Ponder, ponder, ponder. Ponder, ponder, ponder. You know, that's a that's a pretty tough one. I, I you know, hmm. I would say I don't have one in particular, but I really like as we've been traveling like through Canada and stuff too in the US, we're learning about all the local lore of all the stuff. Mm. And that was pretty cool to hear about some of like the monsters and things that were like it was funny. We actually in Canada, we went on like one of the it's been on like the most dangerous interstates or like most dangerous highway routes like in the world or something like that and there's like some lore with uh one of the turns or something that we were driving on and we all got like freaked out overnight they weren't even supposed to tell us about it because apparently it is kind of dangerous but it's also kind of like superstitious and urban legend of the curse of the whatever road so someone brought it up on accident they're like oh man i can't believe we're going on this road tonight and then we're all like what do you mean and like oh you didn't hear about the cursed whatever road in Canada and like the West Coast, it was kind of cool. And then I ended up like researching it, and I'm like, oh, this is weird, you know. Cursed but, um, whatever road, very scary. Yeah, <laughs> I you know I always watch like all the documentaries on urban legends, and I you know all the stuff of like throughout uh, the U.S. mostly. And uh, yeah, I don't know, I don't have anything in particular, but I really like because it I like trying to freak myself out with a lot of the stuff. But um, I don't know, they're even like in where I'm from, like Buffalo, like in Niagara Falls area, about half hour north, like right up by Canada. There's a lot of like superstition with uh, like, it's called Devil's Hole area that's supposedly mm -hmm. cursed and it's like satanic and demonic and stuff. So that was always fun growing up to try to figure that one out. So mm -hmm. yeah, I like all that stuff. I you know? still love oh, the yeah. curse of the whatever road. That is my new favorite. <laughs> the curse of whatever road. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you got to find the curse of whatever road. Whatever it's up road. in, uh, <laughs> it's up in, that's a, that's an area up yeah, there in up there. Uh, Saskatchewan, Saskatchewan yep. area. The curse of the whatever it. road, you know. <laughs> yeah. With the I'm someone. Doing a horror franchise based on it. Okay. Uh, so my, <laughs> my final question to you before a game. Let's see. Okay. Um, which film, which horror film do you think would be the easiest to survive and which would be the most difficult to survive? Hmm. Okay. I feel like I could survive Friday the 13th. If I know. Go to the camp. <laughs> exactly, right? That's what I'm saying. Or even if I'm in the camp, if I know, you know, you have to you have to think this, like when you're in Friday the 13th, like do the characters actually know what happens preceding like the deaths of the other campers? Cause it mm -hmm. seems like it fits the formula of like, oh, if you do this, you're gonna die. If you do this, you're gonna die. Mm -hmm. Being that I've already seen the movies and I know, I feel like I could survive Friday the 13th. Okay. Jason pretty well. Um, the one I don't think I would survive would be, um, uh, you know, cause I think most of it's unfair. I think I would, I don't think I'd have a chance in Saw, you know, if I'm in a jigsaw <laughs> trap, you know, it's just kind of like, yes, you know, and even if it's fair, it's like, oh yeah, you're still going to get like pretty, pretty hurt 
because you have to like cut a key out of your stomach or something. You know, like, oh, okay, cool. Thanks. Yeah. That wasn't fair. You I know? don't get it. I like that Vincent said nightmare in Elm Street because how much coffee you drink, you'll probably never sleep. <laughs> so <laughs> that's true. That's oh, Freddie will never get me. He's going to be like, oh, he, he just doesn't go to sleep. He's <laughs> only asleep like an hour a night. You know, it's so funny. I love yeah. that scene in, um, nightmare in the first one right where she she pulls the coffee maker out from like under the bed and it's just like brewing a fresh pot of coffee and she just starts drinking it it's so funny i love it <laughs> what a yeah great movie. so good right yeah so good so one of my favorites good. for sure that's when i really want to see in theaters because it's okay. only you know i wasn't old enough when it came out to have seen it in the theater so danica what, a nightmare what, on elm street it's so good mm -hmm. well, what's the first like scary movie you and i ever saw together Ooh. Because I remember when we when we saw Final Destination, I want to say it was oh, part like two or three. Yeah. And I was like driving us home. You... After. Oh, you know what? It may have been actually the one before that would have been Hannibal. I remember that vividly. <laughs> because your father nice. called you on yes. the way home and so he called at your house <laughs> and said, Yes. Hello. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> we were like, That's oh, so God. Good. Dad? oh no. Yeah. We're gonna die. Yeah. Uh Maddie, do you remember like the first horror film you got to see in theaters? That's funny. You know, growing up and stuff, it was always you know, I didn't I didn't see a lot of the, the horror movies in theaters until I was like older. I think mm -hmm. my parents and stuff were like, No way, uh uh, not happening, you know. So a lot of it was kind of watching like I think one of the first ones that really freaked me out was still to this day is one I love so much, like Night of the Living Dead, you know, and watching mm -hmm. Cause that was like public domain you can watch it and I, I remember growing up on like the um the universal monster movies as well mm. still to this day like i love them so much so when i was young i didn't see exorcist i didn't see texas chainsaw massacre i didn't see halloween you know i didn't see that stuff for me and i think that's why it carries through now that i have kind of like this um kind of like an innocent attachment to halloween and horror and all this mm -hmm. stuff like i really like the trick-or-treating and the fun i like kind of i grew up more with like the Frankenstein, Creature from the Black Lagoon, you know, black and white horror stuff. And um, it wasn't until I was like way older that I saw like Exorcist. And I was like in my 20s when I finally saw all this stuff. And I'm like, oh, okay. Like, so you weren't scarred honestly. for life like the rest yeah. of us. Okay. I was not scarred for life. So because I saw more of the mild stuff that was still horror associated, I it carried through like the rest of my life of having more of like this innocent kind of fun like, vibe with Halloween, it? you know? You know, like, yeah. you know exactly. Uh, I love yeah. stuff like that. More into like the cartoony, the, that's why I really like Terrifier too, um, is that it, it's so you know, violent. through a lot of the movie, like the final act and everything, it was so, well, yeah, it was violent, you know, but in terms no, of like mild, the atmosphere, mild, but, but it's, it's very mild, it's mild. No, it, it, like the Halloween aesthetic was really cool with it, um, mm -hmm. of like the, the bright lights and the saturation and the greens and the purples and the orange. Like, I love all of that stuff when it comes to Halloween, when they're in the haunted house at the end and it's so Halloween-y. I love all that stuff, you know? Uh, it's so Halloween-y. I love it's it. So Halloween I, I it's love my that, like, especially within those first scenes, like in the house, that it is so filmed like an 80s horror film. Mm -hmm. Like the house itself, I don't know how many people recognize this, but like that is the most 80s house I have ever seen besides my own home. But like there was like wood paneling everywhere. There was like oh, yeah. olive and mustard colors. I was like, this is 80s and I love it and it's horrible. <laughs> I knew it right away. I'm like, I know what he's going for here. This is, and it works. Okay. You know? It's great. Scary guys. That's what we're trying to say. The 80s is <laughs> yeah, right. Okay. So let's play our game of Would You Rather. Maddie, you, you are a pro at this by now. So, uh, I already know all the answers. Yeah, I know. We cheat, cheat. We sent him to you. Yep. Okay. So uh, I, I, whichever I you it. pick is what is correct. Uh, John, correct. That's right. Nika, do you want to? never lose this game. Do you want to go first? Sure, I'll go. Okay. All right. Would you rather drink pickle flavored coffee or drink regular flavored coffee that smells like <laughs> cheese? That's funny. Um, wow. Um, you know, just for fun, I'll, I'll do the pickle flavored coffee. I would do that. Really? I would. Tell me how it is. Yeah, <laughs> I would do that because, okay, if it tastes like regular coffee, I'm not really, I don't know. I could do that. But the fact that it smells like cheese isn't too exciting. It, and it'd be kind of weird, right? But, but yeah, I'd do the pickle flavored coffee. Actually, I think you're onto something with that. 
I might even talk oh. to someone. Okay, more for you. Thanks for the recommendation. Mm. Yeah, don't they have pickle flavor coffee? There's companies that have like the most extreme flavors. They have like bacon flavored coffees and like peanut butter and jelly coffees and all this stuff. There may even be I mean, some I like fun. Do that, pickle. but I I don't know the food. Yeah, and- I've had pickle beer. That's fucking gross. Pickle <laughs> beer. Yeah, there's so much pickle stuff. Fucking you know. Gross. Luckily, and I luckily love pickles, because, but <laughs> yeah, but luckily because I can't pick the wrong answer. Luckily, I'm right and you're wrong, so that, yes. that's cool. <laughs> yeah. Good wow. job! Yay, yay for y'all! Okay, here's the next one. Would you rather right. go on a date with Jennifer from Jennifer's Body or go on a date with Sydney from uh, Scream? Uh oh, geez. Um, that's funny. So, on the Machine Gun Kelly tour. I saw a lot of Megan Fox. That's funny. So now I'm like, oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> if I go on a date with her, I'd be getting a call from him, being like, "Hey, what are you doing?" Um, yeah, 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 probably, yeah. <laughs> probably not. Also, yeah, um, you know, let's go on a date. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's go on a date with Jennifer. I would. Okay. Well, it's not the same it. person. Just, just this, is, right. this is Jennifer. It's this is the Megan Fox. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. So yeah, let's do that. And look at what she's doing there. That's like, it's oddly. Terrifying. Yeah, I love this. I, I would do that. should be able to do that. I mean, I die, but like, whatever, it's fine. Yeah, you know, worth it. All right, Danica, yeah. you want to do the next one? <laughs> sure. Uh, would you rather go as a pair of jorts or go as governor of Tasteville? <laughs> oh, jorts all day. I would. I would go for the jorts. <laughs> I want to see anyone in that. <laughs> Right, I, I think we all know that that was going to be the answer. Somebody be a pair of. Jorts. Well, on RuPaul's Drag Race, somebody was a pair of pants. Oh yeah, RuPaul was a pair of pants. But I think the jorts are a nice upgrade for sure. Yeah, yeah, I'd go jorts. It's just it's just John Cena's costume. I might have to get those. I, I'd wear that around Japan. That's what I'm going to get. I'm going to get some jorts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's going to be a good time. Okay. Fair then enough. I'd really okay. be freaked out. All right, here's the next one. Here it is. Okay. Do a cover of Monster Mash or do a cover mm. of Who You Gonna Call Ghostbusters? That's so funny. So I actually did a cover of Monster Mash like many years ago, 10 years ago or something. Mm. True story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it was like when, it's funny, it was when I first got my um, like recording rig and I was getting situated for the first time and getting into production and mixing. One of the first things I did, it was around Halloween time. So I did a cover of Monster Mash and like released it licensed it got it on itunes and everything um i'll have to find it it's kind of like lost somewhere but but at this point yeah i'd definitely rather do a cover of ghostbusters that seems, oh. like, that seems like something i should actually put in my like calendar and actually do you know okay that'd be amazing <laughs> yeah after yeah. the pickle beer or you know uh i drink some pickle coffee or, or, i mean pickle coffee yeah. i'd make sure i'd call jennifer back and say hey yeah. that was a good day blah blah, blah <laughs> but now i gotta do this cover Thanks yeah. for letting me wear the jorts at, on the date. You know, it'd be a good time. So <laughs> yeah, it's all gonna come full circle. Jorts on a date. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's really coming together for you, Maddie. Okay, everything's um, great. Things are looking up. All right, Miss Shmanikas. All right, would you rather eat a bucket of candy corn or eat four packs of Peeps? Oh wow! Oh wow! You know, I would probably do the bucket of candy corn. I would do that. Wow! I think I could do it. Yeah, I believe. In I you. think. It, I wonder how big's the bucket. It's a let's say a pound. A pound, a pound. Danica. Yeah, let's a do a pound. pound of candy corn. Wait, I mean, yeah, four yeah. packs if of I, peeps is a lot of peeps. That's a lot of. That's a lot of peeps. <laughs> I feel like if I didn't have to eat the bucket all in one sitting, and it's like, hey, over the next week you have to eat this bucket of candy corn, I, I would do that. I could do it. I feel like we didn't specify, so I feel like you just got the, uh, yeah the the way to do it yeah yeah i think so yeah. if i didn't eat it one sitting yeah i still go with candy corn i feel like i could eat more of that <laughs> than the peeps i could okay. do it all right okay great, answer. <laughs> great, answer. Disgusting, but great okay here's the next who doesn't one. like candy corn <laughs> candy corn, like chilling like behind me this is great you know i i love the aesthetic of candy corn it is i think the most halloweenish aesthetic i have mm-hmm. them on yep. my nails but i don't want to eat them i don't want to uh, I don't know. Uh, unbelievable. Really. I could probably de- eat uh, a few. I don't ever not a fan of peeps either. I don't know. Yeah, ew. That's yeah. what I'm saying. But I definitely would go candy corn more. Yeah. And I would eat a little bit. I don't know if I could eat a bucket, but in terms of this <laughs> hypothetical question, I can. I'm gonna do it. 
We're not <laughs> forcing you to go to follow through with these things, Maddie. I feel like Maddie, yeah, if you want to come back on the show, <laughs> you need to provide proof that you ate a bucket of candy corn because you yeah. answered the question that way. And he threw it everywhere. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> on stage. <laughs> and got fired. Awesome. Would you yeah, let's not let's not do that. Okay. <laughs> would, would you rather uh travel to shows in Christine or travel to shows in Sweet Tooth? Hmm. Huh. Oh, I don't think the Let's do car it. has to necessarily be on fire. Yeah, that's it. what I was thinking. <laughs> yeah. If it's because <laughs> that's like the obvious answer. Like, do you want to take this vehicle that's on fire right now, <laughs> or do you want to take the one that's not? Uh, yeah, I take Christine. That'd be a good time. You never know what would happen. You know, that'd be fun. Yeah, that'd be. For you. <laughs> I'm gonna do that. I'm taking Christine. I hear it's uh, sporty and it's fun and it's vibey. You know, yeah. I feel like she's gonna be really good on whatever road. You know, like that's just. Whatever. If she's on like the, the urban legend, the curse of the whatever road up in yeah. Saskatchewan area, sure. like it's gonna yeah. it's gonna be crazy. Yeah. Living. Done. Here we go. <laughs> we got two more. Curse. Okay. All right. Would you rather be the villain in a horror movie or be the final person in a horror movie? I mean, based on what we've already said about how I can't even go into a haunted house attraction without freaking out, I don't think I could ever I don't know what would happen to me in that situation if I was ever the final person in a horror movie. And it was just me all alone. I would, <laughs> it, it wouldn't end well. Um, I would love to be the villain, of course. That'd be okay. fun. Well, okay. Wow. But it's weird because mm -hmm. I don't, I'm too nice. You are. I, I would have to be kind of, I know, but it's weird. It's like, hey, you either you, either you be the monster or you get scared by the monster. I'm like, okay, well, then I'll be the monster. Here is that seems like fun. Here's Maddie as the okay. villain, right? Maddie walks in in his best jorts and serve you coffee that is so hot that that's all it is and we just have to wait for it to cool down while maddie's like trying to be villainous but the whole time he's apologizing haha -ha. i put two sugars in their in their coffee and they wanted one haha <laughs> that'd be you, my horror movie you know you yeah, that's my horror movie yeah. terrifying i would watch that and be like oh no they messed up the coffee <laughs> order i would be i would be scared about that you know be kind of we'll crazy. have to get your brother to make it that's what i'm thinking yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm going to talk to him about that. Hey, can you make the, I mean, they had Ice Cream Man. They had that movie, you know. They about, did, Clint Howard. So I, there we go. I love Clint. Clint's, yes. Clint's amazing. Um, I should talk to my brother about, hey, you've seen Ice Cream Man. Now let's do Coffee Man. Yep. Where they, he has a coffee truck mm -hmm. and he just messes up people's orders. That's and then it. They, that's Brutal. it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Brutal. It, that's it. Your brother's <laughs> like, it's going to be terrifying. Thing. What's the horror part? You're like, you don't understand. That was it. <laughs> you didn't hear the part about two sugars when it was supposed yeah. to be one? <laughs> yeah. I had no cream. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, this is 2%. Oh, <laughs> I feel like we're going to be something here. So we'll either contact your brother or Damien, Leone, um, whoever's available. Yeah, I think, I know Damien's not really, like, finding too much success with his films at the moment. Really? So yeah, maybe should I should hit him up. up. Okay. Yeah, and say, hey, you know, maybe you should try this coffee movie instead. We've got a way better idea for you. <laughs> yeah, forget the yeah. killer clown. That's not working for you. No. Let's do a coffee movie. Coffee. All right. <laughs> oh, cream of the crop. That's a great name. Oh, that's good, Stephen. Thank you. Oh, that's good. <laughs> All right. That's we'll, good. we'll pay you 1%. All right. Here's the final <laughs> would you rather, Maddie. Uh, would you rather solve the Lament configuration? I don't know why there needs to be a, a time, but I guess <laughs> read from the Necronomicon every morning. <laughs> um, hmm. Wow, that's tough. Um, I, ooh, I, every time I go to answer, I then think about what it entails if I say that. Oh. So, but I would probably have to go with the Necronomicon every morning. That is the better answer because I think so. Forever or a chainsaw arm, I. would I'm not going to pick the lament configure. That is the worst yeah. possible outcome you can have. That's what I was thinking. Like, I know the, the deadites and stuff are scary. And I'm like, oh, I don't want to deal with that. So I'm going to, oh, no, I'm not going to go the other alternative. But, so yeah. we're doing Necronomicon, yeah. you know? A really good choice. But just because you read it doesn't necessarily mean you have to say the words out loud. You know what that's I'm saying? That's what I'm that's yeah. exactly it. So yeah. yeah, I know the loopholes for sure. I've yeah. got this. We love a good <laughs> fun, fun side note. There is an Evil Dead musical, and the music is absolutely hysterical. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, there's a song which is "What the fuck was that?" Um, and then there's another song that's called "All the Men in My Life Keep Getting Killed by Candarian Demons." <laughs> <laughs> a true that, that fits. Yeah, that's it. That's so funny. Demons, Candarian. Oh. 
about demon skin dairy, skin dairy and demon <laughs> everything about that is i love evil dead it's you know? hysterical <laughs> yeah I'll, I'll read the Nep necronomicon every morning okay, i'll do this wait, with your pickle coffee anyway uh, <laughs> while eating candy corn yes your bucket of candy in your jorts <laughs> Correct. In my jorts while calling Jennifer. Yeah. You know, it's just going to be God, your whole life. Is busy life ahead of you. Yeah, I'm going to have a busy week. This week's yeah, going to be rough. Sorry, Avril. Um, Maddie was <laughs> yeah. very booked. Moment. Yeah. <laughs> I'm too busy to, to practice. You know. Well, uh, before we uh, let you go, Maddie, this has been so much fun. I couldn't think of anyone better than to spend our spooky Halloween episode with. Uh, yeah. Like, final I feel the same. Episode. Oh, thank you. Any final thoughts you want to leave us with here on this spooky Thursday? Uh, final thoughts. Go see Terrifier. It's great. Yeah. That's my favorite mm -hmm. movie so far this Halloween season. Yeah, um, yeah we're going to be doing some fun stuff in Japan pretty soon, like we were talking about. So there'll probably be lots of fun things to, to watch if you want to follow on social media. we got some fun stuff. Avril has a new song coming out uh, next week, I think, November Young 3rd Blood. with Youngblood. So there's a new song coming out, so you can expect, you know, that to be making appearances in live performances and promo and stuff. So uh, that's pretty much it. That'll take us through the rest of the year, and then uh, we'll see where next year takes me. But, um, yeah, that's kind of kind of it. I'm kind of just on the road for the rest of the year. You're making Boring house. stuff, you know, nothing crazy. Yeah. Oh, my God. Just Mine. Japan and Europe and stuff like that. <gasps> <I'm>, uh, <laughs> like I said, I apologize. You should probably get some better talent on the show. You can get on <laughs> We tried. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we tried, Matty. You were like 10th on the list and we've had to take you, you know? Yeah, uh, listen, I, I feel like you're one of the people that has appeared the most on the show and it's because we just adore you so much. You are always like up to something and uh, you deserve all the goodness in the world. Um, all the buckets of candy corn that you did little heart buckets desires. And, buckets. and um, I guess uh, let's go over our upcoming guests that we have coming oh, up. Let's do it. Um, I want to see. Okay. We present to you the upcoming guests. Okay. We Next present. Tuesday. So after Halloween, we have Matthew Patrick Ooh. Davis. Who, he is wonderful. He's in the new movie, The Barbarian. He plays the mother. He is oh, so good. Chef's kiss. We also have Ricky from the band Ice Nine Kills. I feel like like we're taking Halloween into the first week of November. Yeah, you, you kind of have. I like this. Yeah, like yeah, we're... Yeah. We're dragging it out as much as we can. We also have Gary Anthony Williams, from whose line is it anyway? We have comedian slash dentist Jimmy Lee. If you don't know Jimmy Lee, you're about to, and I hope you're sitting down. Uh, we also have uh, WWE superstar Al Snow. We have Casey Jost from uh, Impractical Jokers. We have Jay Gordon coming up. Oh, that's a singer from Orgy. Oh my God. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Cool. Yeah. We have, and then we also, <laughs> I'm like, oh my God. We also have Duncan Cheek, uh, who is incredible and he's written a bunch of musicals. And um, we'll have to have you back on, Maddie, once you. Uh, Sounds good. I'd love to. That'd be fun. Done. No, yeah, I'll see. After I, I'll come back, I'll report back on the bucket of candy corn, let you know how that all went. So, and the reading of the Necronomicon every morning. So, pickle coffee. Good I'm excited to hear about that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's going to be, I'm going to, you know, if, if you think that pumpkin spice coffee is very divisive, just wait until I start introducing pickle coffee to the world. <laughs> that's going to be the thing. Can't good. wait. Yeah. <laughs> so, ex expect to see that in coffee shops uh, next spring at a coffee <laughs> shop near you. Yeah. Maddie's pickle it. coffee. Yeah. yeah. Done. Pickle coffee 2.0. Oh. That'll be the Maddie 3.0. Maddie 2.0 is blueberry. <laughs> yeah. But the 3.0 is going to be the pickle. pickle what coffee. a leap. Um, I, you know, I, you got to take chances in this industry. I was going to say, I really respect your diverse palate. Um, <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> My favorite thing about you. All right. Anyway, guys, um, have a very happy and haunted Halloween. Go see Terrifying. <laughs> you haven't yet even watch focus focus on disney plus and we will True. see you guys next week be safe everybody au revoir Bye. marco polo oh, polo i think right is that what we're playing yeah i think so <laughs> bye guys see you guys <laughs>